welcome to the Dr. Gundry podcast. So have you ever come across someone who genuinely had it all, someone who is happy, healthy, and successful in every aspect of their life? Well, when you have all the right tools and of course the right mindset, you can have it all too. And my guest today says she can help. On this episode of the Dr. Gundry Podcast, I'll be speaking with the celebrity life coach, Lauren Zander. Lauren recently released her book, Maybe It's You. Cut the crap, face your fears, love your life. Oh, this is going to be good. She's also the creator of Inner You, an online course that helps you realize your hopes and dreams. So today we're gonna to discuss how to rid ourselves of the personal pollution holding us back. We'll also talk about Lauren's famous Handel Method for living the best, most fulfilling life possible. Yes, even when we're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, this is gonna be must listening to. Lauren, welcome to the program. It's really nice to be here. <laughs> so, you have developed a huge following as a life coach and have even coached other lifestyle experts like my friend Dr. Mark Hyman as one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, can you tell our listeners uh, a little bit more about what the heck does a life coach do? So, first of all, there at this when I started life coaching, there was no such thing. I was, I was literally having to face the embarrassment of the, what's that, right? Like, huh? Never even heard of it. So I was a life coach back, started in 98. Trust me, there wasn't, I, I had no competition and nobody wanted in. Uh, so then I, but I, so I developed my own method and process of what I wanted to teach and do in the world. But the reason I came up with a method and a process was because I didn't want to be a unicorn who could like one person who could do it. But I really wanted to develop something that I could um, teach. And then I didn't have to be there to do it. So my dream wasn't, it's the Lauren Zander show. The dream was there was a process that people who wanted to fa facilitate that no matter where you were from could. So, so I could, yeah. So that was what I was committed to developing after I started being just successful as a coach. So, okay, give us an example. Why, why did you write, maybe it's you? So I had, so first of all, I've been teaching them. I developed the method, been teaching the method, developed it at MIT for, and really got to work on the students and do a human study with them and get a white paper written from, psychology department at University of Illinois. Like I did all the groundwork to see what I was developing. And so I worked very hard at developing a process that anyone could use and I was guaranteed it worked. If you actually did the work, it would work. And so that's my, that's all I cared about was, was actually proving it worked and did it work and could I have someone else teach it? Like I was, that was my sport. And so, I never wrote a book like you, like you, that, that seems stupid, right? Like I, I hear it was 20 years later and I, I couldn't like, if one more person said, where's your book? <laughs> You're like, why'd you write a book? I'm like, cause I had to answer that question eventually. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but my real heart is in inner use because I'm a, I love telling stories and I love using examples and I love, showing people that I'm a jerk first and then how it worked and why it changed. Like I, I love teaching through storytelling and giving examples and it's, and then getting a group together. I put people in buddies, right? I get you like, so I have a whole process that that's what I'm in love with. The book teaches the method, but really my inner use are my spirit of community and come together and love each other together and deal with each other. All right, so what the heck is personal pollution and how does it impact our lives? Our inner dialogue, which most people can't even differentiate from like, did you even hear what the thought said? 
What does it say about your body? Can you admit them? Can, like, do you even, do you listen to that? Vo- like, so I care about the voice in your head being the voice you wish it was, not the one you currently have. Oh. And, and no, and so I want to break into that. I'm a hacker into that mainframe. And then I have, I'm only as good as I could teach you to do it. So that's, that's my sport. And what I have people do is start to find out what that voice is up to by having them do the homework and start, like there's a step-by-step process that you get to take over the voices in your head and truly live a life that you designed by your own vision. And I don't care what your vision is. I am not morally trying to make anyone anything. I There's only one principle I believe in that I think is my moral compass, which is no lying aloud. You wanna, you're not allowed to tell your wife this when you meant that, right? No, you don't owe monogamy unless you actually want it, right? Like you, you, we have to deal with all things honest and, and, and that vulnerability. So these voices in in my head, we're not talking about schizophrenia. <laughs> no, we're talking about your inner dialogue that's directing you to push snooze. It's directing you to tell your boss you sent the email and now you're going to run to your computer, right? It, it's, it's the voice that says, I'll get it for you, honey. And it's like, you didn't get me anything today, right? Like it's, 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 it's the it's what you're running around, what's running you that you don't know is running you, but it's constantly running you. It's, and it's in your mind and learning to figure out how to take over the voices in your, the way you think. No one knows that's the most fun to have in life, right? We meditate to shut it up. Yeah. But we, and I, but I don't want to teach you how to shut it up. I want to teach you how to rewire it and take it over and be the cause of how you talk to yourself. So give, give, us, uh, give us an example, for, uh, just out of the blue. Uh, give us an example. How, sure. Yeah, how do you help somebody talk to themselves? First, you have to, so people have theories. I'm too old to get a new job, right? Yeah. Too old to get a new job. Yep. Okay. And I go, that's not true. Who said that? You're like, the world, the news, like the whole world, everybody. And I'm like, really? Everybody knows. (laughs) Everybody knows. And I'm like, actually, we're going to suspend that. And you're going to find out that your inner dialogue, like what picks up the article. Like there is, you are focusing at all times and something is making you look for that evidence. Some, your theories are collecting data. And if we, and you, I understand you don't know, you can make up new theories and then collect new data and then get new results. I totally believe you don't believe that's possible, but that's my job to teach you it is if you'll follow instructions. So the first real instruction is you want to have, you want to believe you can find a new job and find something you love and make good money. Yeah. Do I believe you can? Absolutely. Great. We have to figure out what the criminal in that head of yours is saying that makes it impossible for someone like you. So then I have them trail their negative inner dialogue. You know, on the trail of their negative inner dialogue, they don't take a shower. They don't, they don't, they stay on Instagram too long watching that news station that only makes you feel worse about the world. Right. And now it's 1145 and you haven't eaten yet. So you but you deserve because it's so hard out in the world. So you're going to, you know, eat crap. Because it'll make you feel better. And then you'll get to work at one o'clock. But you know what? You really feel like a nap. And now you think you might have depression. And I go. Do you hear what your inner dialogue is doing for a living? It's driving you to bed in Netflix with a cheeseburger. 
do we really want to listen to that voice anymore? Like, you don't mind if we kill the voice because he's a quite a, a fat loser. No, are you going to be one? You will if you keep listening. So then I make that person write down their negative inner dialogue. And then I teach them that that's their lower self. It's never going anywhere. As a matter of fact, a lower self is the instigator for what the higher self says. I don't want to get out of bed. Go. <laughs> right. That. So I, te I slow it all down to make a person wake up, to make a person conscious, and then rewire that to their dreams. And then the first thing I do is I put people on Mark Hyman's diet. First thing I do. Because Mark doesn't starve people at all. So it ain't because you're hungry. It's your addiction to sugar and carbs. Like it's your, it's your addiction to the cocktail, right? It's not because you're hungry. And so when I get a person to hear their inner dialogue, I put them on a diet of eating anything that's on Mark's list. Or how about my they, list? <laughs> what's your, I, I'm sorry. I only know his list. That's but I'd okay. Be happy we, to we, take. we we agree on a lot of things. I can assure you. What I would love to know what what do you what's different about what you chase? I, my joke about Mark is he brought back broccoli. <laughs> so I, I take away lectins from people. Yes, lectins. I'm I'm the lectin guy. What's a lectin? So I lectin. don't even know what it is. Oh wow! Well, we're going to get you a book. Don't worry. It's a plant protein that it's out to kill you. And it's actually out to make you depressed and anxious. And yeah, you're right. What is it in? Well, it's in, for instance, breads. It's in almost all of our ultra processed foods. It's in tomatoes. I'm so sorry. Yes, it is. The one vegetable they call a vegetable in the school system is yeah, tomato it, sauce. It, yeah, exactly. It's a fruit. All right. <laughs> we, we, we'll talk. But let's talk about you. <laughs> All right. All right. So you created the handle method to help people find the honest happiness. Come on. Is there fake happiness? Uh, mostly that's all that's out there. Yeah. Ah, okay. So what, all right. How do you find honest happiness? So what I do is I make people break out their life into 12 different areas. So most people think that life satisfaction should come from two or three, right? No. No, I want you to have a dream, a vision for your whole life in 12 different areas. And then I would make you rate your life against that dream and explain why you gave it that rating. I give you a very funny, not that funny rating scale so that you real, and then explain why you gave it that rating and what you think is between you and fulfilling on that dream. And so what I've done is I've pulled out your negative inner dialogue and you'd be amazed. I have never met a person who could write a great dream, even in an area they're successful. Yeah. People do not know how to language a dream. People do not know how to believe. It's like, according to science, over 80% of human thoughts are negative and repeating from the day before. Loops. So you think that the guys you hate on the road are new every day, but you don't realize you have raid, road rage every day. You don't care who, who has the brights on. You're going to be mad at them and blink them. Right? We don't realize we do the same things every day. We think it's new. So, so that's... So wait, I, all right. So wait a minute. There's, there's 12 <laughs> areas of happiness. I had no idea. I had 12 different happy areas. Potential happy. Ah, potential happy. Do I have to have? Yes. Do I have to have all twelve be happy? They're happening to you anyway. So I mean, it, will I get an A if I get ten out of the twelve happy? Or I mean, I, I, I'm. I, there's there's no reason. There there's it's so whether you like it or not, you are in all these relationships all the time. Is what I'm saying. This yeah. is the backdrop. Whether you're present to it or not, there's learning right, is an yeah. area of life, you, right? You, you don't learn anything new, it's dead to you. But that, that's a I thriving agree. area, right? There's spirituality, whatever you believe it is, right? You wanna meditate, you wanna be an atheist, I don't care what you wanna be, but there's like, what's the purpose of being here, right? And what do you wanna do about that? I don't care if that means watch funky sci-fi, right? But you, it, it means something to you, right? And then there's health, your body, there's your love life, 
and sex, right? And sexuality, which definitely deserves a vision and a dream. Like, so there, there's your career, but there's also a relationship to money. You could have an incredible career and be the stingiest person who's scared the money's going to dry up. Yeah. So th- we have many areas in our life that we don't feel alive, even if we on our resume look very successful. So happiness is the inside job. It might be also the outside job, like you have to achieve some things, but there's an inside and an outside, and they both have to be to your specs. All right. So is there is there a tiny tweak that you can give someone today to maybe get the process started? Give, give us a little tool. The tool is get a buddy because you can't do this alone. And trust me, one of the best buddies you could ever get get is your children. You go, you tell your kid, I'm going to make sure I exercise four times a week for 30 minutes or I owe you 20 bucks. Did you do it yet? 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 Right. So I also have, so, so I put in promises for, for a behavior I don't want to do anymore. So an example would be, this would be a good one in COVID season, if you have children, is we have a jerk jar. And anyone who's a jerk, you know, depending on which age the kid is, is how much money goes in the jar. And the least jerky gets the money. Ah. So it's a game. Okay. Right? And parents never win. But we're jerks. Right? And so... I'm constantly making it fun to work on your dark side, right? So I, I, and I'm not teaching people. So, and then the most important thing to teach your kids is you're not perfect. You don't know really better than them in lots of ways. And you're working on yourself is inspiring, yeah. right? So, uh, so, and then the other thing I say is most humans, and I mean this, are three promises away like if you figured out the three promises you don't want to make, drop carbs, drop alcohol, drop Netflix. <laughs> you don't get your Netflix till you practice the guitar. Oh, you want to learn Spanish? Yeah, it's time. Right. So that you you really give yourself a promise that would make you proud of yourself. And you hold and you have your kid or someone who really will hold you to it. And you take it on for a period of time. Do I, do I have to have fluent Spanish to watch Netflix? Or, I mean, can we negotiate here? It's all, it's all I spend, it's like, so for example, a really much better example is there's lots of people who could be dating right now on the internet and really are looking for love, but don't know how to deal with it. There is no better season. You don't have to go out. You could and my and you can get on FaceTime and you can meet people and really connect and not have to worry about anything except connecting. So then you'd make a promise to sign up for a dating site by the end of the weekend and that you would spend an hour a day swiping or whatever you it do. is. Mm-hmm. And that you'll make yourself available to dating. It, it's it's more what would change your life. And everyone knows the area that is the domino, right? So if you're not dating because you don't like your body anymore, then if you really took on losing weight, getting on your diet and keeping that promise to lose the carbs of any kind that you'll say not to have for 30 days, how they would they would be doing the losing weight trail your inner dialogue who hates diets, even though would be very proud of you. And then it's all about dating. So that's how I make, I hold people accountable to the right promises that they wish they were keeping, even though they're the hardest ones for them to keep. See why you can't keep them inner dialogue. Very negative. All right. So are there any stories that you can share for any that just show that anybody can turn their life around. Hold on, I let me get yeah, let me get my work, head on the straight. On okay. The biggest 
The biggest changes that I think are most moving to me are revelations, revolutions, and big changes in the area of love. Mm, okay. So a woman who didn't know she wanted a baby, but got married in her early 30s to a man who already had a kid. So they never really talked about it, but she was 38 years old and had a rep. And then we did this. So she never wanted, her mother was in the foster care system. She had a hard childhood. She's a very successful woman. Didn't even like, and then I told her she better watch out because if you heal your relationship with your mother, you never know what happens to your desire to have a baby. Right. And so we fixed her relation and we really fixed her relationship with her mother. And, um, and within a year after that, she really did want to have a baby. She had that conversation with her husband and she discovered he was a hard no. And she was devastated that he, he would be blamed for the rest of her life for why she couldn't have her baby. And she didn't like his kid that much. Uh. Right. So it was like a little bit of a cluster. She came to me at that time and was like, do I just give up on my dream? Like, is it over? And I said to her, I go, do you want to know what I would do? Or do you want to know the like, what do you what do you want? She's like, what would you do? I go, I love the truth and I trust the truth. And the truth says you're having a baby. It means you have another love of your life. That's the real one. I'm like, I never go with the past is the right answer. <laughs> and I never go, you're done. And I never go, the good is already gone. The good is yet to come. If it's this good today, wow, what's coming tomorrow? <laughs> right? So I don't believe in the hype. So she said, I'm following your lead. Tell me what to do. We're in. You got me. I got you. When I go, like, first of all, everyone, within a year, she was pregnant. She's been, she's working on her second child now. Now. With who? Three, with, let me tell you her story. Um, she is all, she's not a coach. She's a doctor. She's a very, she's a, she's a big deal. Right. And uh, got divorced very quickly. It wasn't a big, that was not a big deal. And then when I told her she need like, we don't have time for you to wallow. We have to like start dating immediately, honey, because we, we don't know where this guy is. Right. Ready for how cute this was. So on her first group call where she was talking to a bunch of very interesting people, she announced to the group that I made her announce that she's starting to date again and that she's single and she has to start admitting it to everyone in the world so that she gets it herself and starts to deal. Ready? She gets a text from someone who was in her group telling her he's been in, he doesn't want to let anybody else have a chance. He's been in love with her for years. Ah. Yeah. And they're like, they're, right? They're the, like, that was it. She, the biggest problem she had is, is this sick of me? Am I allowed to go out with him? Am I, is this allowed to be my guy? Like they were moved in and together. Through, like it was more embarrassing that she was even married than the rest of her life didn't take off. So that's the kind of work that's available to a soul who believes in themselves and tells the truth. Like everyone has that in them. Mm. Okay. And I mean that. <laughs> and I, I believe you mean that. I really do. So, and, um, okay, so a lot of, is, would, would a life coach always say, well, here's what I would do? Um, um, the method really makes you deal, right? So go find your negative theories. Okay, great. We're going to debunk that negative theory. Go prove to, like, we really are changing the way the mind talks and thinks. And, and we, I also really do make you go make a lie list, right? The reason never to find the handout group would be because you don't want to go anywhere near the history of lying. Mm. So I think the root of the dark side is our ability to lie. 
lie to ourselves, lie to others and get away with it. And that builds our shell of a persona and a disconnect from our true selves. Our true self would never lie. It would never fake it. It would never pretend the steak wasn't overdone. If you ask me, how was it? I would say, I like rare. You mean you, mean you don't fake it till you make it? Uh, no, you would say, I don't know how to do this, but I really want to get an A. <laughs> Same thing, right? right? Right. So I teach that, no lying allowed. That's really what I teach, the end of lying. I think the, I think the biggest problem on earth, the biggest em epidemic on earth is that we humans think lying is a virtue. See, President. Well, and, and cer certain cultures love lying. They, you know, glorify lying. The I, that I, there, where's the lying section in the bookstore? It's the thing that ruins marriages, businesses, presidencies. Like it's like lying is is the most corrupt thing we all agree with, but no one does their own lie list. No one even resolved all their lies with their parents who they love. No one thinks lying is personal pollution. Remember when you asked me what's personal pollution? Yeah. Personal pollution is the way you lie. And all the lies of your history create you believing you're stuck in your lies. You believe your fears. Your fears cause lying. Like it's all tangles back to the root. The root is our ability to lie. Man, I think we do need a lying section in the bookstore. I, you know, I, I, I'm, we're, we're going we're gonna to make you the poster child for that section or something. Trust me, I'm alone. And, and you know, I was always worried someone was going to like steal my thunder or come after my area. Yeah, no. 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 <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's not going to happen, huh? Yeah, you have to be a truth teller in order for you, for you to believe in the end of lying. Uh, that, that's true. That's true. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, is there, okay, so uh, follow-up question. Is there any hope that you can stop lying to yourself? Or is it a process that you're always going to lie to yourself, but maybe less? No, I think you, I, I think you have to treat it like it's a catch 22. Like there really is cleaning up all the lies that are, are, so I, I, I create, I, the list, is, there are seven different types of lies. And I make a person go through their whole history and the most important people in their life and what happened in their life and really see which way you lie and who you lied to, given these are the seven different ways we lie. You don't do all of them. You might be heavy in a few, a little light in some. But the minute you start to see all the different ways you lie, you then can have a choice whether you're going to do that anymore. Right now, no one has a choice because they think they're lying. You know, if you ask any person, do you have integrity? They would go, yes. And I'm like, really? Do you have integrity to yourself? Yes. And I'm like, really? Tell me something you wish you would do and wished you would do for years. I wish I'd. And how do you have integrity with that? The most important thing in your life. You think you have integrity, but you don't have to do that. It's like people have never been tracked down and taught what it means to be true to yourself. It's not taught in school. Where is anybody learning it? That's true. Really? Right. There's no language for it. There's no take the time to develop it and really wonder about it and really write a paper on it. Right. Like there, it's just not being done yet. So that's my shtick. So uh, and do you you mentioned, I think, off, off camera, you work with with corporations to do this as well. So, I mean, you can you can actually make a whole corporate culture stop lying so, to themselves. A hundred percent, like that's we. It's called building honest cultures, right? And what if you? I only talked about the dreaming section of the homework, the the life story colonoscopy, but there is a dreaming section. There's a personality trait section. And that connects to your lineage and your history. And I call that your operating systems. Like you, you like those are not things you can 
dismantle. You actually have to dial them up or down. Like you can deal with your Jewish sounding interrupting way of behavior. <laughs> right. I can make promises and learn how to not be like that. Right. So it's traits. And then I make people go into their parent, like, and I get you there through your, ma your parents' marriage or however many marriages or their personalities, which means I'm trying to get you to clean up the whole line. And then the final section is haunting memories. People have no idea why they keep certain memories alive and everything else is gone. And so the whole philosophy teaches you how to break into memories, your traits connected to your dreams. In a company, there's dreams, there's the traits, and there's hauntings. Hauntings for the CEO, hauntings for who he hired, hauntings for failing at the dream, hauntings for how people don't deal with this or that. There's all the drama and the guy. So the very method that I use on an individual completely transfers to the individual in a group. And so it, it's it's really fun because you have a personality at work, you have traits, you have like it's people don't have access to not being ashamed or getting ridiculed, but there's a language that they're all using to talk about the shit nobody talks about. It's not that people don't want to make a difference. Everybody does. It's not that people don't want to be called out. They do. They just don't want to be humiliated, shamed, embarrassed, and called out by someone who does it too. And they certainly don't like hypocrites, even though we're all a bunch of hypocrites. So we make that funny. And we won't come in unless we have the boss. And he goes first. So I created a method to transform a culture in a month. Because truth telling, truth telling is the thing no one's expecting. I'm chasing theories that always our fear base trying to keep us in line, right? Like, oh, if you say it, it could happen, right? Like, I love making fun of that stuff. Really, where'd you get that, right? Is it really, do you actually believe that? Or is that just a superstition? Like, what the hell was that, right? Or is it a, and I, one of the things I teach, cause I need it, is when I have a really negative thought, I have a promise that the minute I hear it, I have to do this action and it makes me laugh and it works every time. Ta -ta -ta. Very Jewish, right? Knock on wood would be the, the equivalent. But if you really knocked on wood and you go, thoughts create reality, screw that thought, right? If I made it, I could kill it. That is the beginning of people taking over their inner dialogue. Now, what are you connecting it to? So it's doing something good in the world for you. That's a whole different bag of tricks. So is there, uh, is there a place for this, this lower voice? Is it okay to have this lower voice? It's, never, it's your best friend. Okay. It's, it's, your, it's your vices. It's, it's literally like if I said, I, so I have my favorite vice. Everyone brace yourselves. You're not going to be impressed. Okay? We're ready. We're ready. You ready? It's Every, really everybody's gross. waiting. It's it's quite gross. You know, I would give up most things for tobacco. Like I I like and and everyone brace yourself one more time. A spliff is ideal to me, which is mostly tobacco with a little bit of marijuana, and I think life turned out. And I, then I need a bonfire with my favorite people around and really good music playing, like really good music. Uh, and it should and it should start at 10 a.m. so I could be in bed at a reasonable hour. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. I should start partying with my favorite people. Like, do you understand? That's my dark side, right? There's uh, nothing wrong with that if I only do it at Burning Man. <laughs> um, when at a and I do it about four other times a year and the week of Burning Man. I'm not ashamed of it. My kids know, everyone knows what I'm into. That's my dark side, liberated. It, it, right? Yeah. So I'm not like, if I can tell you about it, right? You're like, Lauren, do you get Botox? I'm like, yes. <laughs> right? Like, what do you, like, if I want to keep it a secret, I can't do it. 
if I respect myself for it, whether you like it or not, that's my dark side integrated. So I'm not trying to kill my dark side. I'm trying to make friends with it and get everybody to be okay with it, including myself. And I don't lie. I don't sneak. Right. And so then I can love myself fully, but I am certainly not waiting for the day I want to get on the Peloton. I got on it today. I was going to say, you mean you don't have a Peloton? Come on. Oh, you got it. But you don't like it. I like real spin classes. Oh, yeah. I like being with people. You, you, you know, you really do not strike me as a people person. I mean, I got I to gotta say that. And... Come on, I would like climb through this. How do I get closer <laughs> to you, honey? I can't get any closer, right? You, and, yeah. I wanna, and I want to hear your stories. I've talked enough. This has been great fun. And you, you are a, as we used to say, a hoot. But Lauren, <laughs> maybe it's you. So yeah. how... How do we, wh where do we find it, obviously? Wh where do we find all about you? Um, I mean, we all, we need help. I mean, my gosh, I, you know, I had, I had no idea I needed so much help. I, I, gotta, I gotta phone a friend, I gotta call Mark Hyman. I said, Mark, I need help. <laughs> he would, he would, he would tell you why I'm the most dangerous fun thing that ever could happen to you. Yeah. So anyway, but um, so the book is obviously the cheapest way to get your hands on this method. Okay. It, it's awesome and it covers everything. Inner you are my 25 minute kind of a podcast, like really well done, laid out. And then the homework is digital, like it's a whole program and there's classes and you'll see me there and there's a community and there's a buddy and there's all the technology works. And for $325 during COVID season, it's usually 650 people and it will be back. Wow. But half off because it's a mess out in the world and I want to be generous. Right. And so that's it. Come on in. And then we give away and you can even come to we have classes all the time now. We ha like wake up your day, wind down WH. Um, right. And we really are hoots. And I have over 25 coaches working full time. Wow. Yeah. So I have about 65, 70 employees. So most people don't ever see me. Oh, it's good. You will love other people. It proves the point that it's not about me. Good point. Good point. So you can teach this method, obviously. And obviously you you can even just listen. If you're a coach or you want to even think about it, I have designed it to be knocked off beautifully. Right. You can't like it even lays out how to think about a process. It, it, it teaches so much because I spent 20 years developing this. And we have inner you life, which is your whole life. We have inner you love, which is only your love life, people. And, de and really uh, <laughs> unpickling your pickled picker. Uh-huh. And, and really forgiving your history and understanding why your picker is so problematic. And then we have inner you career, which is all my work just designed for companies and what we do there. And we have inner you student, which really is what we do in universities now. And we teach, we, we've been, we really care about education and, and seeing if we can change the education system. Good for you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for being on the podcast today. Nice to meet you. Nice Bye. to meet you. Take care. All right, it's time for our audience question. Gardenia White on YouTube wrote in and asked, Dr. Gundry, could you please talk about the benefits of fenugreek seeds and how we can take them? Hey, this is actually a good question. Uh, long ago, when I was looking up what spices were really great for you, et cetera, et cetera, I was pretty keen on fenugreek, and I think it's has some interesting properties, but 
warning. Fenugreek actually has a pretty interesting lectin. Remember, some seeds have lectins, some seeds don't have lectins, and I'm sorry to tell you that fenugreek seeds do have lectins. So, uh, if, you, if you're making a curry and you're pressure cooking the curry, it's okay. The lectins will be destroyed. And that's often where you find fenugreek in curries. Uh, so, just, and luckily there's not a whole lot of fenugreek that goes into most curries. So you're probably not going to be really harmed by the amount of lectins in the fenugreek that comes in. But a lot of times fenugreek is soaked and sprouted, and there is at least one paper that says sprouting fenugreek seeds uh, probably really lessens the lectins. Last but not least, I'm going to make another pitch for if you really want another seed that fluffs up really great, uh, don't use chia seeds, please use sweet basil seeds. They're easily obtained and they don't have lectins and it's my new fun thing to play with. So, uh, but yeah, be careful about fenugreek. Sorry about that. Review of the week. Following my episode with Jeff Chilton, Krista Salma Salmon on YouTube wrote, Thank you for this information, Dr. Gundry. I'm just starting on the Plant Paradox Diet, and I'm always on the lookout for new information to increase my knowledge and understanding on what is best to eat and why. I have been a lifelong mushroom lover, but now I really understand the health benefits. Now I will eat them even more. Well, thanks a lot for letting me know you like that. Uh, as you know, I think mushrooms are just the, about the one of the most great foods you can eat. And in my upcoming book, The Energy Paradox, you're going to find a startling new reason to eat mushrooms that probably surpasses everything I've ever told you about them before. And boy, if that isn't a teaser for The Energy Paradox, I don't know what is. So, Thanks for writing in. Keep the comments coming. We read them. We'll read them on the air. They're always great. I appreciate what you say. And we'll see you next week. Before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you.